writer friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Kimberly, writer and teacher, and today we are going to be talking about all the ways to keep you from being scammed. Yes, it does happen. And in this video, we're going to cover everything from editors to cover designers all the way up to vanity publishing. So before we get started, make sure you smash that like. And if this is your first time here, please subscribe. Be sure to ring that bell. I post new videos on Wednesday and sometimes I post bonus videos. So let's get right into it. Number one, not everyone is an editor. So you might have seen people charging a lower rate for editing services. And a lot of times those lower cost editing services are not professional editors. Unfortunately, these people will sometimes only run your manuscript through editing software and send it right back to you. And that's not helpful because you could do that all by yourself. And I know that real editors, a reputable editor is somebody who is expensive, but they're expensive for good measure. You could easily pay well over a thousand dollars for a editor to do a developmental edit on your manuscript. In the description down below, I'm going to leave a link for Reedsy's list of how much it could cost for an editor. But typically for developmental editing, it's anywhere between two to three cents a word and copy editing about two cents a word, proofreading around one cent. But whenever you're looking for an editor, consider that not every editor is suited for every single genre. Now, make sure that you also, when you're re researching them, research whose books did they actually edit. Now, this matters because you can do references. This is why it's important to make sure you ask that question. Ask for a sample, ask for references, for these other authors that they have edited for and contact them for a reference. It's not weird, it's not awkward. You can reference them for how much did it take for them to edit their manuscript, were they satisfied with the end result, and was it professional. Also keep in mind that if you go with a cheaper editor, your quality is also going to be cheaper. A reputable editor is going to be able to give you a sample edit of what you're looking at for working with them. Also keep in mind that not every single editor and every single author are suited. They won't always work together, so keep that in mind that just because you find an editor, maybe that editor doesn't take your manuscript because it's not something that they want to edit. Number two, book cover designers are not made equal. I wish I didn't have to say this, but it's true. These less than reputable book cover designers often don't have original stock photos. Their work is stolen from somewhere, as bad as that sounds. It's a clusterfuck of copy and paste. They don't have the proper fonts to be able to make the cover look right. And you always want to look for their portfolio to see what other covers did they make. Do they look like their professional covers? Does it look like the colors blend well together? Is everything clear? Can you read it? I mean, seriously, it is more common for me to see a book cover that I can't read than one that is clear, beautiful, and genre specific. A lot of people don't know that a book cover needs to convey very specific things about the book. It needs to tell the reader what genre it is. It needs to convey something about the book and it needs to be readable and clear. These are things that matter. And take the time to look through a portfolio. Make sure that they were professional, the turnaround time is good, and that everything is clear and beautiful. Because your book cover, I don't care what anybody tells you, is your number one marketing tool. If your book cover looks like crap, readers are not even gonna stop to look at it because it's like the same type of situation when it comes to food. If you go to a restaurant and you order a entree of something and it comes to you sloppy, ugly, and it doesn't look appealing, you're not gonna wanna eat it. It's the same thing with a book. You don't wanna read it. I can't explain to people enough that your book cover needs to be professional and beautiful. And a lot of these uh, designers that you find on Fiverr and such, 
that are only charging $15 for their book cover looks like it's only $15. So unfortunately, those are the things you have to consider. A real book cover designer is also gonna know the market as well as the cover for your specific genre and what is expected in that genre. Keep those things in mind when you're considering your book cover designer because you don't want to go with the designer that you need to end up getting another one anyway because the cover didn't come out the way you wanted it to. I do suggest Mibble Art because they have specific designers. They're pretty affordable as well as their covers look great. There's a lot of samples on their website that you can look at for different genres and take a look and see what they have to offer that they've done for other authors. Number three, I could be your agent, but it will cost you this much. I can't even believe that this is something that somebody ever thought up because how long are you sitting there by yourself thinking, how can I scam a person? I'm going to charge them to be their agent. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. Real agents that you have to actually query, you can't just they don't contact you. I, I, I hate to sound cynical and rude about that, but real agents are never going to be contacting you going, hey, heard that you are ready to publish your book. Hey, by the way, let me be your agent. I'll, it'll only cost you blingy, however much money they say. That is the most ridiculous thing ever. Don't fall for it because that person has one thing in their mind and that's never to get your book anywhere. They'll just say something like, oh, well, you were rejected or I don't even, I can't even imagine the things that they would tell you, but it is crap. No agent comes to you like that. No agent makes you pay. Agents make their money by selling your manuscript to a publisher and getting royalties, a portion of the royalties back. That's how they make their money. They don't make their money by you paying them some hourly wage to get your book nowhere. Okay, don't fall for it. It's not real. Number four, the random people who think that they're going to promote your book or the person who says I'll promote your book if you promote mine. These are the people you find, usually find on like Instagram or places like that. They'll send you some message that says, hey, we let us promote your book for this amount of money. Now, there are real platforms that will promote your book to a set of readers. But I would say to check out their profile or whatever and make sure that who they have on there that you can actually contact those people and see if whatever amount that they paid was ever recouped in sales. That's something that you definitely want to check out because it's not uncommon for places to be able to promote your book on like Instagram and stuff. That's normal and it's actually, um, for a lot of writers, it works to drive in some sales. However, a lot of times it's just somebody who is telling you, I'll promote your book, but they don't really promote it. And then there's that person who says, oh, you know what? I'll promote your book, but you got to buy mine first. They're not gonna promote your book. I don't care what they tell you. They may post it on their Facebook or something like that, but they're not really going to be promoting your book. They're there so that you can buy theirs and they can gain whatever they need to from it. And unfortunately, yes, these people do exist. And I wish that I didn't have to actually mention these people, but as soon as you think you're publishing something, all of a sudden these people start flocking to you so that they can promote your book and you can pay them when you can learn a little bit of marketing and actually promote it yourself and drive in those sales without bringing somebody else in to do it for you. Number five, paying for reviews. I can't believe this is actually a thing that scammers really do, but apparently it is. They will contact you about you thinking that it's a good idea for them to review your book. A lot of times newbie writers are left in a slew of feeling like their work is not validated. And unfortunately, that is hard on the ego for a lot of people. So what they want to do is they want to get somebody who will review their book. And these people who want to review their book aren't actually reading their book. These are the scammers that are leaving a review so that they can get your money. But they're not actually leaving a review that is suitable for other readers. If you aren't already aware, reviews are for the readers. They are not for the author. I didn't know that authors didn't know this for the longest time. 
Reviews are for readers. When you are getting reviews, by the time that you receive that review, you should have already gotten beta readers and a professional editor. These things that readers are talking about shouldn't be the feedback you are expecting. This feedback is for other readers, so they're not leaving these for you. And I know that that sounds harsh, but it's true that real reviews are for readers. Now, don't be confused with the, the places that will actually, places and bloggers. There are real bloggers who will promote your book and review it by reading it and promote it and leave reviews. These are the type of people who you're not making a understanding of some kind of agreement of how much of a review they're leaving. They are leaving a review solely based on their opinion of the book. This is not the same as paying somebody to review your book at X amount of stars. There has been people reporting that the reviewer didn't want Amazon to flag their account for leaving too many five star reviews. So in turn, an author had to take a lower star review because this person was afraid that they, their account would get banned. This is why it's a backwards approach. You're not getting these reviews for the reader, you're getting them for you. And when that starts to happen, it's a scam. Number six, all of the publishing scams. So I will put a link down in the description below of the most known and common vanity publishers. So keep a lookout for those. There's about 18 of them in there. There's more out there, but just those are the most common ones. Now, the first thing we're gonna talk about is how is a traditional publisher different from a vanity publisher? So a traditional publisher, or also known as a commercial or trade publisher, they purchase the rights to publish, distribute, and sell your manuscript on an exclusive basis. Large publishing houses and bigger independents will pay in advance on royalties, while small presses typically don't. Traditional publishers are highly selective on publishing manuscripts as there is no cost to the author. I'll say it again, there is no cost to the author with traditional publishing. Publishers undertake the entire financial risk. This means they foot the entire bill, including professional editing, professional editing, okay? Uh, professional cover design, marketing, dis distribution, and ways to drive in sales. These are things traditional publishers will pay for. And why? Because their main objective, nothing else, I'm going to tell you nothing else to them matters except sales. Okay? They are only there to get that book in the hands of readers. That's their only idea for traditional publishing. They are solely making their money on sales which is why they are so selective. And so keep that in mind as we go through this list of things because understanding that a real traditional publisher does take care of everything, we're gonna get into why it's completely different to get with a vanity publisher. Now, what is vanity publishing? Vanity publishing, or also known as subsidy publishing, charges a fee to produce and publish the book. Now, unlike assisted self-publishing services, which also charge fees, vanities present themselves as real publishers. This is why they are different. As with traditional publishing, a vanity publisher contracts rights on an exclusive basis. This is something like uh, some degree of gatekeeping. They often will tell you that they exclude manuscripts that are too long or that they can't sell because they're not vanity, all right? But vanities will also be more selective in things where there's such a defined market like Christian or certain anthologies or like memoirs. They'll accept things like that because they expect that the readership is going to be small till to none. And so they know that they aren't going to have to worry about selling the book. Now, Vanity publishers' fees are the main primary profit source. And as a result, vanity publishers have diminished 
the idea of marketing and distribution because they don't care okay they don't care if anyone reads your book they couldn't care less if it just got washed away in a hurricane because that doesn't matter to them they've already made their money some vanities claim to offer non-fee contracts alongside their fee-based ones in some cases this is true but in most other cases it's just a marketing ploy a lot of places will say that they are a hybrid publisher and that it's different from vanity how is it different when they still charge a fee well unlike a vanity publisher a hybrid publisher is committed to getting your book in the hands of readers they will often have a more professional quality in editing design and marketing and distribution but um, that typically it's still lower if at all and unfortunately many of the hybrid publishers dress themselves up and state that they're hybrid but really are just vanity publishers in disguise so why do they exist you're asking well simply to make money off of you that's it they don't care about anything else you're making their money that's it most newbies are so desperate i mean so desperate and they can't see that they're being scammed right in front of their face. And who does this actually benefit? Nobody but this publisher. Because these same type of fees that you're paying to this publisher is the same type of fees you could pay for a professional book cover, a professional editor, a real uh, personal assistant, which helps with marketing and such, these vanity publishers that say that they can publish your book really don't care about any of these things and it only benefits them in the end. And so here are some tips so that you can know whether or not you're being scammed or you're getting a real book deal. So one of the bigger things that you can tell yourself when it comes to are you being scammed is are they contacting you? This will sound really cynical, and I'm sorry, but a traditional publisher won't contact you. Traditional publishers, you typically need an agent in the first place. So you would have to query agents, and if you are unsure how to do that or unsure where to query, I will leave a link about my don't publish your book until you watch that video. It has information about agents and querying them and where to look for that. Um, so I'll definitely put that in the description down below but one of the things to think about when you are being contacted by a publisher is traditional publishers won't contact you they contact your agent who contacts you this is how that kind of situation will work and for the big big name publishers you typically need an agent now there are situations where you don't need an agent and there are some that accept an unsolicited manuscript but those are different and I'm not meaning that they're vanity, but if they're asking you for money, I'm gonna put it in, there's no simpler way to state that. If they are asking you for money, they are a vanity publisher or at best hybrid. And if it's a hybrid publisher, be careful because all of the same services you can obtain yourself. And oftentimes if it's a hybrid publisher, you're required to use their services. So you're required to use their designer, their editor, and all of the different things they offer when you can do all of these same things yourself. Now, a claim to be a hybrid publisher when they're really not, always give extra scrutiny to someone who labels themselves as hybrid. The next one you're gonna hear is a setup fee or deposit. Publishers will tell you that it requires a setup fee and that they may tell you you're not paying to publish, you're just contributing to the cost of preparing your book for printing and making a good faith investment to your career, into your own success, and you can't make money without spending any money. Some publishers will promise a refund of the fee under certain circumstances, but usually they make sure that those circumstances are never fulfilled. And this setup fee may not be very much, but it may just be a few hundred dollars. Sometimes I've seen up to $600. And don't waste the cash because they don't use professional services. They use low cost 
unprofessional staff. They use free or low cost platforms that you can use yourself. And the covers are usually less than, less than what you want. So next they'll tell you there's a fee for some aspect of the publication other than production. So some publishers will tell you, oh, you're just chipping in for editing or for the cover art or some publicity to get your book out there. And these services may cost thousands of dollars and are often minimal and not professional of quality. So you'll also hear fees. There are gonna be fees for extra services that go above the basic things of publication. So they're not charging you an upfront fee, but they do offer you the opportunity to pay for expedited editing where they'll give you website placement and these services are optional. So why not get them? And the publisher will claim that it's not making the author pay to publish, okay? But there's often a lot of pressure to either sign, buy, or if you don't do any of those things, then they treat you like you're a less than less than perfect citizen and that your and that your work isn't worth it. And that's often why a lot of writers will put in that amount of money because this pressure is really heavy and they know exactly the things to say and exactly the things to do to make these authors feel like they're backed into a corner when you're really not. So they'll tell you that there's a book purchase requirement. Some publishers will include a clause in their contract requiring you to buy a specific quantity of finished books from a few hundred to several thousands and often at a paltry discount. This could be more expensive than straightforward vanity publishing. Why? Because you're buying books that oftentimes aren't even yours. You're buying books that are somebody else's books. So what's the point? The next one is a sales guarantee. Now they'll tell you if your book doesn't sell X amount of copies within X amount of time, you're gonna have to buy the difference, which means you could be buying a hundred or thousands of books. Most authors who are new to the industry are over optimistic about the idea that they're gonna sell thousands of books and so they'll never have to pay this and usually they're wrong. It's unfortunate that publishers are able to do that and make you feel that way but it does, it happens. The next one is a pre-sale requirement. It's a similar contract clause that may require you to pre-sale a certain number of books prior to publication or a guarantee of a minimum number of sales. And if you don't make those sales and you're unable to recoup the publisher's investment, then you may have to buy them yourselves or you may have to get investors or organizations to pitch into the sales and get this publishing deal off the ground. This is especially tricky when it comes to the pay to publish scheme because this is a little bit more of a way that they don't actually have to fork over cash. You're not being told to give them money right away. You're being told that some of these things need to happen and but your book is great. You're going to sell it. None of these things are going to be an issue. It's not the author's job to be a salesperson, but you do have to understand how to market your own book. But you shouldn't be responsible for that kind of requirement. And a traditional publisher won't do that to you. And typically you're going to not sell the amount that they want you to sell and they know that. And so they know that they can scam you without you knowing you're going to be scammed. It's a later scam that will get you in the end. So keep an eye out for those kinds of things. The next one is withheld royalties. Oh my God, you get no royalties unless the publisher's out-of-pocket cost has been recouped. This means that in this version of Vanity Publishing, you don't actually have to hand over the money either. But money that should be yours for sales is kept by the publisher, which is pretty much the same thing. So this, I think this one's actually worse than a lot of the other ones because in the end you don't get your royalties and they still have rights to your book. They get to be the ones to decide whether or not you get to have a audiobook. And if you owe them money, they may not even allow you to do an audiobook to be able to make that amount back. So a claim that a fee is only part of the cost and the publisher foots the rest. This is extremely common. 
uh, when the sole purpose is to make you feel better about handing over a lot of money. It is at best an exaggeration and at worst a lie. Vanity Publishers profit comes from the fees the authors pay for the books rather than the book sales from the public. And this is also due to low editing, low design, low production, low marketing. I mean, these are poor things that happen with vanity publishing that a lot of times they're not going to tell you about. And unfortunately, it's easy to fall for. So don't fall for this either. They don't care about making up the rest because typically they don't use very professional services. So the fact that they're going to cover the rest of the cost doesn't actually cover the rest of the cost because they're not using anything that is of quality design for you. So the last one is the pressure to buy your own book. I don't even know why this is a thing from them, but this makes a lot of sense as to why they would go about this. Uh, the publisher may not contractually require you to purchase your own book, but it, they may make a deal of telling you that you don't have to buy anything. So it, it puts you under heavy pressure for you to actually get your own book, but they'll say it's at a discount and it helps you get to the top seller list. And they're making their money solely on you and whether or not you're buying your own book. When you could be buying your own book by publishing it yourself. DIY publishing is really a thing now. It's normal to publish the book yourself, find an editor, find a cover designer, all of these things and not get scammed by vanity publishing. And the main thing to consider when it comes to vanity publishing is they only make money from you. And unfortunately, vanity publishers will employ tax that will make you feel like you are backed into a corner and that you have no other option and that your book is not ever going to make it in any other way. And I'm here to tell you that that's not the case, okay? I don't want to see you get scammed. Don't let anyone tell you that these things are okay, that it's just it's just a little payment. It's just a, it's just this, it's just that. No, 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 no. I will never tell somebody to go with vanity publishing because they don't give a damn about your book. They don't give a damn about whether or not readers are actually gonna enjoy it. They don't wanna do any of that. They only wanna make their money off of you. And once they make that money off of you, they don't even wanna bother with you ever again. I've heard some of the worst horror stories about how vanity publishers ghost them after they've paid all these fees and their book cover is ugly and it doesn't even it doesn't even look like anything that they would have wanted in the end and a lot of writers feel awful it's embarrassing and it hurts to be scammed i'm here to tell you do your due diligence and don't get yourself scammed i don't want to see that happen i it hurts my heart every time i have to see that somebody lost money because they were scammed by somebody and uh, it sucks that there's more scammers out there than there's reputable, honest people. And when that happens, you really just have to be careful and make sure that you ask for references. If you are looking for an editor or a cover designer, here's my biggest things to tell you how not to get scammed. One, a sample. I want a sample edit. I need references. I want to see what other books you have edited. This is for editors, okay? These three things. Don't forget these three things. A sample edit will save you a little bit of time. Any reputable editor is going to provide all three of these things. Now, when it comes to a designer, ask for a portfolio. Ask for references of previous clients. They should be able to give you that without a problem. And three, check out these other covers that they have made and contact those authors. It's not weird, it's not awkward. Do these three things for each of these and I can tell you it'll keep you at least knowing whether or not somebody is up to par with what you need as a writer. When it comes to people, make sure that you do all of your research. I will leave a link in the description down below for you to be able to check out editors at ReadZ and look at some of the costs of what you're expecting there. I will also leave down below all of the most common vanity publishers that have been listed and blacklisted. Thank you so much for watching. If any of this was helpful, 
please subscribe, smash that like, and drop a comment below. It'll tell the YouTube algorithm to suggest this video to other writers like yourself. And I'm here to tell you, don't get scammed. Follow me on social media. My links will be down below. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.